Well, so we were off, we were off doing some, a bit more training at that point, but we will get there. Uh, sometime soon, there's going to be a a jingle will appear. <laughs> <laughs> so that's that's going to be good. Help, JT. Yeah. Just, just just to just to let you know what what I'd like you to talk about yes. eventually mm-hmm. is where studios were at some time ago. So when there was vinyl, because you do go back a while, don't you? Hey. <laughs> <laughs> you can go fair? back even further, mate. <laughs> so. If we if we start talking about digital studios, which I think is where where John is, at. he's off in his phone now, but he can hear what we're saying. Yep. <laughs> okay. um, it, is, it is related to radio. What I'm doing on the phone. Yeah, because the, the this studio is there's sort of layers on top of it. If the, if the CD disappears soon, which it may do, um, it's still been around for twenty thirty years, something like that. Mm-hmm. And um, the basis of the radio studio was was built with vinyl. Is that is that right? Yes, that's right. So um, this desk that's in the middle of the studio mm-hmm. um, is something that you'd rec- recognise from long ago. Was that is that? Yes, from the bygone years, <laughs> <laughs> way 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 back. <clears throat> so, um, what is it? It's got it's got faders in the middle of it. It's got various knobs for controlling it a bit. Um, some of them I never use. But perhaps you could come around and show show me some of them. Yep. Okay. We could have a go with it, or perhaps we'll start off with the. We, we've also got a sub mixer here, which we think we can feed John's phone into. So as as it goes along, we'll 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 try that, and we'll also try the um, try the jingles, and the listeners will just have to bear with us, because uh, we can only we can only improve through through trying to learn things. This is um this is from from way back as well. This is. Uh, Aretha Franklin, one step ahead. Punic FM on 106.8 FM. So that's uh, Kaz, Kazabian. Kazabian? This is from the uh, Keep On Running. That, well, that's what I call running CD, which, uh, which we're working our way through. That, seem, that seems to work okay. But meanwhile, John has been off in his phone, and I believe you've got a new track, John. Yes, a track that I actually bought from iTunes, believe it or not. Well, I, well, I know you. You very often spend money on on music, like most <laughs> yes, most people. Indeed, I do. Yes. Um, um, now, stay closer to the microphone. Now, I I come across on YouTube where I get most of my blast music ideas. I come across on YouTube yesterday uh, a song by Akon, and believe me, he normally effing blinds, and I wouldn't normally recommend playing his music on radio. But this song, Sunny Day, I thought was a lovely composed and lovely song. So I decided to buy it on my phone, or buy it, and uh, and, um, and play it this morning. And here it is. So, John, say, say again who that was. That was Akon, Sunny Day. That was Akon, Sunny Day, and I, if you were wondering where I heard the song to, I hear a lot of my songs or music from uh, YouTube when I when I just because I spend got a lot of my time on YouTube actually, um, just listening to different songs and that's where I get my song ideas to play on the radio and play on a Tuesday and what have you. And I come across his Akon song. And normally he swears and he doesn't sing very nice songs and it's not suitable for radio and all this. And I I discovered that this song was actually made. Uh, uh, quite a lot of sense, and uh, it was quite a nice song, I thought. So I decided to add it to the show playlist, and here, it, there it was. Yeah, well, it sort of brings to my mind that we could um, maybe get a streaming service of some sort that would warn us when we were about to broadcast something that we shouldn't be broadcasting for language reasons. I don't see why that that shouldn't happen. Well. We might we might come back to that, but I just want to go back, JT. When we got the um, we got the jingle loaded yep. from from the playout system. Yes. Is that the proper term? The playout play system. system. The mirad. Yes. And you you were saying we've overridden it. Normally it's very automated. Is that right? Or well, often it's very automated. How how does that work? Well, it's got a button at the top. Yeah. And when you push it, it yep. will play whatever you've got on a playlist. Okay. So you could, I presume, I don't really know that system very well. 
because I'm used to the old versions. So how did the old versions work? You've you got two turntables. Oh. You put two records <laughs> on, and the DJ did the whole thing himself. Right. So, but now let's let's think about this playout system because this playout system is it's all here, isn't it? There is a there is a database. There's a big computer, mm -hmm. and then it's sort of connected to bits of the desk which otherwise do other things. So we've got buttons to push on the desk which make it connect with the playout system on four different faders. Mm -hmm. So there's lights which should be on or off, and then there's faders which should be up and down. So it's all a bit. It all seems a bit mechanical to me. Well, it is. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it'll be anything else. Would, wouldn't employ a, pl a painter to come and operate it, would you? Well, painters might understand it better than I do, <laughs> quite, quite easily. All, all I'm getting at is that it's a bit different because um, when, when we got when we got John's system set up, because we, what we've got now is a, blue, a Bluetooth connection connecting little device, which we've we've plugged into the desk or through a sub mixer. Listeners, please bear with us. This this is Phonic FM, by the way, one hundred six point eight. And we are sort of having a, having a discussion just on how the, how the studio works and trying to update ourselves on on um, how, we, how we should be doing this. Um, but the the point is that I think John feels happier with his phone when he hasn't got a cable connected to it, when it just sort of works as if he'd got it in his hand moving about anyway. Is that is that roughly roughly right, John? Is that yes? It so, is. So you regard that as being a sort of natural, modern way of operating? Yeah, so I mean, I don't, I don't want the phone to be connected to a cable while I'm trying to uh, ch um, switch songs or choose different songs. Or, yeah, I really can do without the cable. It's, I, think, I think it's quite unnecessary. Um, so, you know, what is the point of having a portable device if it has to be connected up to a cable? The whole point of having a portable device, I think, is so you can move it around in real time and, and do your work from, from, from there. Well, you know, that's the, in my mind, that's the whole point of having a portable device. Right. So in this studio at the moment, you, we've got a fixed microphone. Yeah. You've got to stay close to that microphone. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that was that was good. That was good. That was good. <laughs> yeah, more, more, but that. but um, really, you, it, it turns the music playing the music, the the phone and the the interface of the of the vis, visual effect of the, of the screen. Mm. That's that's all right for you. Yeah, I mean, it, so it, you don't need all these. In my mind, it works for radio because it tells you it tells you um, how many how, how many minutes you've got remaining in a song. So. If, um, but it does. Uh, so you know that's what that's all you can ask for. Really, when 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 you when when you're trying to do radio, I think it works very very well. Okay. All right. Well, I'm going to play some play some music. We'll come back. We'll come back to this. Trying to work out what else we can do on online and how much of the studio we could uh, depend upon. So um, this 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 next track is um, the Count Basie Orchestra because they they were played um, in Havertree Park on Monday, and um, I'll, I'll say a little bit more about S Swing and Soul who who were there dancing um, the Lindy Hop, and this this turned out to be the track that that worked worked the best for that. So the uh, the Count Basie Orchestra. Well, hang on, we've got breaking news here now. Yes. Joe D is in his huddle. <laughs> Thank you very much. Yes, breaking news. Yes, the Met Office have apologised. They say, we got the summer forecast wrong. What, this year? This year. Oh. So there you go, that's official. Well, what, what did they forecast? Uh, snow. <laughs> Deep <laughs> ice. <laughs> no, no, whatever it is, they got it totally wrong. So I have to read a bit more about it, but uh, well, I, I don't, I don't know that they got it. They get things right quite a lot. Yeah. Um, they said, they said. I mean, Monday's the one I've been following. Monday this year, Monday this week, sorry. And that was that was very good. They said the clouds would clear. They said it, there would be some sunny intervals. They said there would be one shower about four o'clock, and that never turned up. 
but apart from that it was it was quite quite accurate mm. i thought the other thing is i think they're going to do very well on social media i don't think they need the bbc absolutely but that that doesn't seem to have um my my point of view on that is not getting a lot of feedback it's sort of based on um there's a group called digital exeter and they had a meeting when would that have been in july i think with somebody from the met office there who does social media for them and they seem to be having a global consequence i think it could could be quite interesting if, if the b well when when the bbc do stop using them whether they do a bit more of their own promotion online don't know whether but how that will work out what else are they saying jd are they saying anything about the autumn uh, no, uh, Devon expected 74% more rain than normal last month. What, we expected it or we got it? Devon expected it. Well, and that's... We got it. Well, I think we probably got quite a bit more rain than you'd expect. And the, and the South Earth, uh, uh, as a whole got gloomy by 70% and it was average, average sunshine. We got more gloomy? Yeah, gloomy. I'm just reading from a, <laughs> from a newspaper as usual. Oh right, but was it, but I mean, did the Met, did the Met Office predict this gloom or was it unexpected gloom? <laughs> it was a gloom, <laughs> depression, low depression over a high time. No, no, it's um, I don't know actually. I'm just, I'm just reading it from here, so oh. I'll read a bit more. Okay. Well, look. I think what I'll do, since you've you, you, you've 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 blown us off course with your weather weather That's a good breaking pun. news. A very good pun. I like that one more then. Yeah. So I'm going to go. But I'm going to go back to the um, keep on running CD and see 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 what we get. See see what track three turns out to be. So uh, here here it comes. Oh, I thought there was—I thought there was going to be a jingle there. Hang on, hang on a minute. Doesn't that nothing seem to happen? Then I'm going to, pl I'm going to try this other one. Oh, that's what it is. Sorry, I've got a little bit Right, sorry, I've blown that out completely. I mean, faders all wrong. I'll try—I'll try it again in a moment or two. Um, I'm still learning this. This. Yes, um, we know. The, yes. Well, so so. Uh, why did I move them down? Anyway. Um, this is Phonic FM. It's one hundred six point eight. Um, I'm Will seven eight nine GB. JD is here, and uh, John is here, and John and I often do the um, We Don't Know show on a Tuesday as well. Chris is away today. He will be back next week. And John, you you were going to tell us an update on what's happening with my dog. With your dog. Well, we we took him to the vet yesterday because his leg is no better from last week, and he's ruptured. He's he's torn his uh, um, um, both anterior cruciate ligaments in both places in both legs. Uh, he uh, he had an operation yesterday. He could, he's had all of his teeth out. He's got a few left, um, and and. The that cost four hundred and twenty one pounds. Good gracious! And uh, the re the 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 leg operation is going to cost eight hundred between eight hundred pounds, or a or a thousand pounds, or between eight hundred and a thousand pounds, for his next operation. So he is not a happy dog at the moment. Dear, oh dear. No, that's all quite serious, isn't it? Yes. He is not a happy dog at the moment, bless him. No, but he's at home. He's, he's but, yes, yeah. yeah, he's at home. But because they can't, because animals can't talk, you don't know what they're really feeling, do you? No. So he's just um, feeling sorry for himself at the moment. I think. Well, yeah, I can imagine. Yeah. But yeah, that's my story. That story update about my dog. Oh. And and is he eating all right? Is what can he eat without with um, his teeth in that condition? Uh, well, I presume soft food. I think most animals uh, can eat without teeth, believe it or not, according to the vets. Uh. You know, I'm not a vet, so don't put me on it, but if they know what they're talking about, then um, that's all well. Uh, but apparently a dog can eat without teeth. And he's still got a few left, so 
I think as time goes on, he'll he'll adapt according to the um, so presuming they're right, that's what will happen. Okay. Okay. Well, keep us updated. Oh, I will. Because we're getting the whole we're get week by week we're getting the old story. <laughs> yeah, well, we? he'll he'll probably have his leg operation sometime next week. All right. But is it but is it two legs he's yes. got? Two legs he's got yeah. to worry about. Yeah. All right. Okay. I thought I thought it was only one. But well, the X-ray revealed yesterday because he had an X-ray. Um, uh, that that he's actually done it in both places. Oh, okay. So um, that's that's what needs to be done. Okay. Well, let's hope it goes well. Oh well, yeah, so do I. According to the according to the vet, it's quite a standard procedure, so it should go quite well. Right. Okay. Well, that's good. That's good. I'm going to play um another another track now from um, Count Basie. This this one was thought a bit too fast, but I think it's quite interesting to know what pace dance is um dance is likely to work at. So this this one is called Swing in the Blues. <laughs> I was the Count Basie Orchestra, and um, the, the the group is called Swing Swing and Soul. That that they they did the dancing, and the, they they actually uh, helped other people to to dance as well. Talked a little bit about the Lindy Hop at um, the Have a Tree Music Day on uh, Bank Holiday Monday this this week, but they they're usually at the Hall, which is on Stepcote Hill, on a Tuesday night between about seven and eleven. And uh, I think I think that's that's quite interesting how that how that's gonna gonna work out what sort of dancing they they do. Um, I've also put a link on the Facebook page for the Wild Show to their their Facebook page, the Swing and Swing and Soul Facebook page, so you can you can find out a lot more about them there. Um, but I I do think the sort of median style of music would be somewhere around about the 80s. I don't know. JD's lost in his huddle at the moment, but he do, he normally does a, a an eighties show on Access All Aerials. On a, what do you mean a, normally? Well, you do. A, you, <laughs> I do it all every week. You do. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. But what I mean is that you normally you well you concentrate on the eighties. Yeah. Because that's what you know most about. Yeah. But you also believe that the eighties is a style of music that most people will find acceptable. Well, 80s, if you listen to music of today, you can see that there's a lot of 80s riffs comes up every now and again. Right. And so you can say, oh, that reminds me of that song 20 years ago or 30 years, whatever it was. Right. But um, it seems to have started the trend towards the sort of music, I think. Of so the trend towards what sort of music? Well, music of today. So you think it's all following on from the 80s, yeah, pretty much? Yeah, it's got to, isn't it? Can't fall on to the uh, 2015 <laughs> screen. <laughs> but why do you... Th- well, it could follow on from the 90s. Something might have happened in the 90s or the 70s. Well, it's the, it's the style, really. If you, listen, if you listen to it now, you can hear that a lot of the dance music you know, it comes it, from the 80s. The beat, the riff, or the yeah, beat, comes yeah. from the 80s. So um, uh, I, that's why I always proclaim that maybe that is the era where the bulk of the super say good music came from. The nineties tried, yeah, but I think failed. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and today there are some good tra- tracks which I like, but um, on the on the, on the whole, you see, I don't like listening to disco music of the of the day. No. Well, it might be us, J.D. We may, so we may have... <laughs> I've mellowed. <laughs> yes, there may, be, there may be quite valid music going on that we just don't know about or can't respond to well, there might sensibly. Be. <laughs> there may be. But I think, it, I think maybe there's a, there's a gap. This is what I'd like to work out, if there is a science to it, what the sort of delay is. So if you, if you look out on, on the people who are sitting there uh, enjoying... <laughs> A sunny day, or reasonably sunny day, um, a sort of slightly overcast day with sunny intervals. No, not from this year. <laughs> no, it was it was all right. Monday Monday afternoon was 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 quite all right. Okay. But if you if you if you could make an estimate of of what the average age is, 
and then deduct a certain number of years to work out when you play the music from. If there was a, a calculation you could do, or yeah. maybe people's phones would tell you <laughs> when their birthday was. We could have it all connected on, I'll in just a, my tablet a robot system, you see. <laughs> But people might think that's an invasion of privacy, of course. I'm just wondering how far we can go with the robots in the cloud. Ah, oh, right. I'm sure there's a, there is a possible well, everything's system. Everything's going to change, they say. Oh. How we play music will be changed due to the copyright laws. In what sort of way, do you think? Ah, right. Have you not heard? No. Right. Well, you're not allowed to. This is by law. To listen to music in your car... Right, which has been recorded on an, uh, an object like an MP3 player, a phone, or anything like that. You're not allowed to listen to it in the car. That's well, are they going to police that? <laughs> so, how, well, how, do, how well, do they know? That's what I want to know. How do they know I'm playing something so, which I've recorded and put onto an MP3 player in the car? Well, what a load of cobblers. No, no, really no, 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 please moderate your language, they're not John. Be, no, but they're not <laughs> John, be, you can not, say this is an unreasonable they policy. They are not going to be able to police that. They, they are really not going to be able to police that. I mean, who, 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 thinks, of, who thinks about that little rubbish? Well, well listen no, to you know no, that no, I'm the policeman. You, no. you, you, you <laughs> I'm sitting in the corner here making You make, up, you make no, up rubbish. No, no, no. It is. It's, no, one, look, it's one of those think, things of the law which I don't know how it's going to happen. It was just... Announced. Are you sure you've got this right? Oh, yes, it was in the paper. Oh. Well, who announced it? If it's in the paper, then, well, I don't know. Well, Do you yes. believe it? No. So, well, I think what oh, they were... But what they were saying... Um, I thought they were objecting to you copying... If you bought the CD or you bought the vinyl... Yeah. You can't then copy it onto your iPlayer and put no, your... you can't put it through even a computer. You're not allowed to do that either. You've got to play it from the source. From what you so if you've got it on vinyl, you've got to have a vinyl device in yes, your so car. If you bought it, I, I presume if you bought it online, I don't know. The, I don't know that bit of it because I've ne I never done that world. It's too advanced for me. Well, I don't. I mean, how many? I mean, there's look. There's quite a lot of stuff I did buy on on vinyl and then bought on CD, but I think that's enough. Yeah, well, that's, I, I don't know how they're going to police and, it. And what's what's happening at the moment is the the the, the vinyl is becoming popular. Mm. And so there are people who never had vinyl in the first place, and they're they're buying they're buying the vinyl again. Well, that's um, what I say. You see, you're taking it back to the eighties, <laughs> beyond the eighties. <laughs> <laughs> so I would have thought on some of these, some of these. Oh, where's that come? That's from that's from John's phone. That's all right. John, are you getting close to a track? <laughs> it's time to move us off. You want? I'm just He's had enough. <laughs> <laughs> just. Um... Oh, okay. Well, look. I think what I'm going to do. I'm just going to play. I've got. I've got lined up. We're, we're playing this from YouTube, which I think. I think is fair enough. I mean, there's another discussion. We'll come on to a little, little bit later. What what we're supposed to be doing with all of this? Um, this is Bill Ding and the Skyscrapers, and th 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 this is an 80s track. And uh, Bill Ding and the Skyscrapers are going to be in Hevertree Park. I think it's the 20th. If that's a Sunday, it's a Sunday towards the end of this this month. Anyway. Because Park Life are doing a a, a, a day in the park. So the, this last Monday was the Haventry Community Association, and uh, Park Life are going to have some some bands, I think, um, including Building and the Skyscrapers. And Building the Skyscrapers um, have not put complete tracks onto onto YouTube. They've just put sort of samples. Um, so we'll, we'll come on to, to to what people should should or shouldn't put on on YouTube and why things turn up there uh, when, when, when we've heard it. We only, we only get uh, a minute and a bit of it. So here, here they are, Bill, Ding and the Skyscrapers. <laughs> Yeah, so that is Bill Ding and the Skyscrapers and they've, they've chosen to make a very good video it's, it re is really well recorded, um, but they're not giving out, they're not giving out complete complete tracks, which is their their sort of approach to, to YouTube. But it seems to me that um, something is happening or has happened with attitudes in the music industry. I thought until until we heard about this this legislation, JD, you've been you've been finding other bits and pieces there. Uh, Does it clarify anything? 
Not really, no, because this is from June, this June of this month, uh, this year, sorry. Yeah. Um, it's just, uh, it just uh, comes under uh, heading, the UK private copying regime is unlawful, the High Court has ruled. So it's, they're going through the High Court to try oh. to, to change it. So it hasn't, it's in the it's sort of like a pipeline, really. It hasn't really sort of said, well, you're not allowed to do that now. You know, it hasn't given you a now yet. No. No, but it is, it is, it is very strange to my mind what, what's going on because I thought that the record industry had decided that they were going to make sort of reasonable offers to the public. So if, if they had MP3s available for download at reasonable prices, mm. people would, uh, would do that and not pirate anything. Um, but maybe that's not what they're doing. Well, no, they, 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 can't, they can't go any further because the, uh, it wasn't supported by sufficient evidence that uh, you were allowed to make a copy of the thing that you've just bought. So they haven't got their, their act together as well, so I don't know why they're putting this out into the, the public, um, um, proclaiming this, you know, right well, now. Hmm. Well, there you are. Interesting, though. Well, right, very interesting. Just how, it just shows how stupid they are. Now, 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 listen, we can't, we, well, okay, uh, John, look, it, what are we supposed to be doing as presenters? Well, I really, I really, see, I really disagree with what they're doing. It doesn't make any sense to you. No. No. But but listen, historically, um, historically, I'm supposed to remain biased. No. <laughs> no. No. In radio, we're supposed to be very objective, and also we love the record companies. Um, okay, we're, do, we're playing stuff from when from, they do <laughs> something. When they do something correct, we love them. When they don't, love well, them rubbish. Right? Well, look, let's let's go back in go back in time. Um, we have played building and the skyscrapers. Okay, so um, they are a live band. They've chosen to make a minute and a half available on YouTube. So presumably we know they're a very good band. We know they're well presented. When they're going to next appear, which will be in Heavetry Park a Sunday, I think it's the 20th, but it's late, late, um, late this month. So people will go along to that because they've seen them on YouTube. And they're playing 80s music. And they're, well, they're, uh, they're playing all sorts of music. All oh, right. Okay. There is some. Six, well, that, that I might play. Is. I might play a 60s track or a 70s track. I can't remember. Stuck in the middle. Steeler's Wheel. That's 70s, isn't it? Yeah. I think. I'll play that in a little bit, or a minute and a half of it, or however however many minutes they've <laughs> they've allowed us to have. But it just seems to me to be quite interesting um, how presenters such as ourselves who are trying to work with social media as well as an fm signal which is 106.8 in the extra area are supposed to work with um records um because i, I think it's quite all right for us to play youtube and to say that we're playing directly from youtube on on radio and we have a, a youtube feed or well, we have a computer with an internet connection um but there are people who say well we shouldn't mention that but long ago FM radio was supposed to be promotion for the record industry and um, so we thought presumably at that point it would be quite all right to say Bill Ding and the Skyscrapers do do a cover of a song called Wanna Dance With Somebody we could say that on the radio that would be all right but can we say um, they have a track on YouTube of a similar similar nature I don't see why not um, I think what I'll do I'll play I'm gonna play It'll make just be a little bit, bit, bit of time while I, while I line, line it up. But I will play um, Stuck in the Middle with you. Building and the skyscrapers. Um, I think what we're, going to, what we're going to know, we will come back to this, because I'll, I'll, I'll talk a bit about um, Just Stone and Water for Your Soul and the playlist that I've done on, on YouTube for that, because I think that some of these issues come back to that. But meanwhile... Uh, John has been checking out his phone and what he can do with it and uh, you found a few tracks John yeah yeah I have uh, it's razor light at the moment so here it is yep right uh, and that was Brian Adams um, the, the baby uh, you're all that I want I, that's how I prefer pronounce it and um the next 
I want to play a, a little bit of um, Snow Patrol uh, um, sat uh, sat by the fire. I'm pretty, I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure you'll all recognise it. So here it is. So you can do another one, John. I can do another one. Yeah. Uh, yeah, no, kick them, kick them up. That was uh, that was Snow Patrol set the fire by the fire bar, um, and there's another one coming up. Whatever's in the queue, I guess. Yeah. So, the, but basically, the phone is working working a lot better now. It was a little bit jumping around to start off with, wasn't it? Yeah, and I'm getting my code wrong. Oh, and I just got into it now. Uh, right now, I have Snow Patrol coming up, and it's um, it's Snow Patrol my girl. So here it is. Well. 106.8 FM. This is Phonic FM. Just Stone from the CD Water for Your Soul. And um, what interests me about that is that I, I, I found most of the tracks were appearing earlier this year on YouTube from live performance. And I did a playlist, and I've spoken about this before, but it just seems to follow on from what we, what we were talking about. Um, did a YouTube playlist. And it, it it ended up with about half the tracks that are on the on the on the CD, and um, that seems to be all right t to me because the copyright I think all the advertising then goes to the song publisher whoever uploads it. Some of them I think were some of the videos were made with cooperation from Joss Stone on on the tour. Some of them maybe weren't. Um, the, the, there were two or three linking bits of, of talk that I'd taken off the record of, or the re, the, the recording we made here in Follow It FM, uh, which sort of linked it together, but weren't really necessary. But that, those sort of bits can be Creative Commons on, on YouTube. And then the other bits are claimed by whoever's got the rights to the publishing or whatever it is. So doing a playlist like that seems to, seemed to me to be a legitimate way of working or valid way of working around it and um it's it's just interesting to me how how this is all all going to work because earlier on we were speaking about whether you've got the right to make a, a cassette recording from your vinyl <laughs> <laughs> or whatever <laughs> which uh obviously um it's a very wicked thing to do some people say but i think if you have bought a cassette and a cd and an lp and you need to play it in your car, and you've got a Bluetooth connection. Well, uh, what do you think? I mean, what is a reasonable way of, and, and sort of connected to that, what do we do in social media to promote things? Because the um, the days of the uh, FM signal, they, well, it may need to be adjusted, varied in, very, in different ways. But nobody's disagreeing with me over there. Uh, JD's lost in his huddle. But I mean, I I, I'm trying. To get oh well, well, JD, what do you think? I mean, I'm just sort of rambling on in a balanced, amiable sort of way as best I can. <laughs> do you have <laughs> any you, sort of? You'll um, be a grand job with the rambling department. Yes. Yes. I mean, does it, is it all making a lot of sense to you as to what we sh what we should be doing? Uh, yes. Go to the highest mountain and sit there all the time until every, all the problems are sorted out. Then ah. come down again. Ah, okay. Okay. All right, we'll go. do that. <laughs> we'll do that. Can I just mention one one other thing, which yep. is the the HMV chart here in Exeter, because it becomes more and more mysterious to me. <laughs> Everything comes mysterious to you. Well, I just sort of <laughs> notice these things, and I think, well, that's that's a bit weird, because the um, the Just Stone Water for Your Soul CD. Well, there's two of them. There's one. There's one which is a little bit more expensive, and it's got a, a CD of dub tracks on it which I recommend. It's not, if you work it out track for track, it's quite reasonable. If you would decide to download them all, it would cost you more, I think, than the difference between the two ones. But anyway, the, the main thing is it, it never got in the HMV chart in Exeter. Uh, it went, it, it appeared as sort of new and then it vanished. And I've, I've come to the conclusion it may be because stoned records won't discount it immediately. Because when you look at what's in the chart, it's all titles that if you bought two of them, it would be quite a bit cheaper than if you just bought one of them or two at the same price, if you see what I mean. So I think there may be another chart of 
CDs that are quite recent that are hidden in the shop somewhere that are full price and have not yet been discounted. But what else is in that chart? I don't know. And I realise I'm from long ago. I really am a long ago person who would buy a copy of the New Musical Express in print <laughs> and worry about what was in the official chart. But it's all very confusing, especially with the legislation here and there. Anyway, um, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm still trying to appear balanced and I haven't got... Jo John, when, when you said you thought the record companies haven't quite understood what's going on or words to that effect, have you got any other way of putting that? Is it really a more sort of um, radio-friendly manner that would um, be oh. repeatable? Move the move the mic over a bit towards. Do do you think it's all making a lot of sense how how music is sold and what the record presenters are supposed to, or radio presenters are supposed to make of it all? Is it at all obvious? No. <laughs> these, <That's> pretty, <laughs> bluntly, these laws that they're that they're bringing in is making radio broadcasting even more harder than it already is. Yeah, because we don't really know what the public are supposed to be doing with it all. No, they, I mean, as JD said, they've released that they're releasing articles to the public, and and it's not even bloody set in stone, so stone look, look. yet. So yeah, what is the point of putting out putting it on the World Wide Web? I do apologise for my language, but it's really really true. I mean, what is the point? Make sure some before before it goes on the internet. Make sure it's set in stone. Make sure it's actually, you know, why is lawyers doing it? Well, the lawyers would do whatever anybody asks them to do. That's oh. that's all right. We can understand yeah, but they're that. They're not but asking <laughs> the music industry to do it, are they? No, no. The music industry has got its own ideas. Exactly. What it thinks it's doing. Exactly. So it should be the music industry alone. Nobody else. Okay. Well, we'll we'll we'll, we'll look for guidance. Um, you can you can find us on Twitter, W E N O T N O. We don't know, and we certainly don't. <laughs> we just carry on, and uh, as long as they'll let us, we'll carry on doing something. Or the Facebook page for the Wild Show. Look for look for the Wild Show, and um, I'm still playing some of the CDs I was I was lent by Barbara for the Habitry Day. Uh, this 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 is this is from a blues blues collection, and it's BB King. That's that's BB King, and um, what's what's happened at the mo at the moment? Um, Chris Chris is on the line, and uh, John's talking to him. So, yeah. uh, All right, I'll see you later. No, oh, oh, okay. So, John, this is this is the Wild Show. Usually, it's Chris Norton who's here, yeah. uh, but he's he's okay. he's not here this week. But he is at home, and he's so he's talking to John at the moment. So, John, just. Just give us an update, how Chris is. Um, his back's hurting a bit. He's oh. at home, listening to the show. All oh, right. So, Chris, it's just been good to talk to you, buddy. Uh, I hope you... Hope to see you next week, and stay well. So, Chris, as it happens, Felix has arrived early <laughs> for the next show. Just explain, the, ne the next show starts at uh, 12 o'clock. The, 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 the studio clock has gone. That's but, right, yeah. But yeah. we will know roughly when it's 12 o'clock, won't yeah, we? Yeah, we've got about 20 minutes and according to this. We've been, we've been talking today about the studio, how it works, and the playout system. Yeah. Which is a, a properly set up archive system with the jingles and everything in it and um, how that connects in with the desk. But then we also want to look at um, what we can do with computers and what we can do online. If we connect to something up in the cloud, how we can use it. And uh, as it happens, you brought in a computer. So yeah. Would yeah. you just come a bit closer to the mic and just explain, <laughs> explain what, you, what, what you're doing? Because I know you don't normally do this through the show, but just for our show, this is quite interesting that you turned up during it <laughs> with a computer. Yeah, well, as you might remember, if you heard the show last week, I brought in a load of uh, copy discs that I just put everything onto to play through the phonic uh, CD players, and they didn't like them, so they, they basically just skipped through each track, and it sounded appalling, so I had to do the whole rest of the uh, thing on, on YouTube and Spotify and various other means to gain music right, on. Right, right. So this week I've just um, brought in my computer, which has lots and lots and lots of albums and compilations on it you make up a playlist and you can just play that straight from there 
Right. So it's a, it's an old fashioned way of doing it. I mean, most people these days would have a tablet or a phone, or I mean, Chris has a phone that he yeah. uses quite yeah. a lot of the time. Yeah. So um, it's the same kind of thing. It's just I don't have one of those. I have one of these old laptops. So yeah, well that's that's this fine. This is my way of doing it. <laughs> yeah, I mean personally, I like I like a keyboard and I like yeah. quite a big screen. That's yeah. my my point of view. Um, but this is interesting because I think I think this is more or less what's happening. That people are copying things quite a lot and they're moving between a digital format and whatever format will work yeah. in the studio. Because you can't, you, you can't really link your own personal media player up to um, any clouds or internet, can you? It's, it's well, just a kind of database that's on your personal computer. I mean, you can have a hard drive and carry it around that way, but yeah. if you do that, it's all kind of mixed up. On the, on the actual media player, you have little blocks, which are albums, and everything is on that album, as it should be. So that way you can see exactly what you're doing. So how far off is that? I mean, what is what is what is the technical problem with that? Could you not could you not have all your stuff at home on a, a server of some sort and connect to it from the studio? Quite possibly, yeah. But I, I wouldn't know how to do that. That's that's the thing. I really, yeah. I, I just <laughs> think because because the other thing it seems to me is that pe people don't necessarily listen to the radio all day long. No. On no. FM, they'll mix it up with other sources of, of music, won't they? Yeah, I would so, have so, yeah. so we're all we're all really in a in a sort of um, some sort of meld or mix <laughs> of well, different tracks which are coming from different places. That's why I do the uh, good, the bad, and the ugly show the way it is. It's so um, people can listen to weird, unusual stuff they wouldn't ever hear normally. Ah. So it's you know you're not going to hear um, the Zombie Flesh Eaters soundtrack just randomly on the radio, or you're probably not going to find it on CD unless you look very very you know you've got to dig very right. deep you've got to go onto uh, on ebay or amazon and see if you get lucky you know if you can find these things but a lot right. of them are quite rare so the, the way i do it is I'll, I'll come across all this stuff find it any way i can right and play it on the show so that's the idea really and, and you mix in a few kind of old you know old rock soul and modern music and uh just bits and bobs in there as well to keep everyone happy but okay mainly it's um soundtrack and sort of obscurities you know right but on this uh, today, it has ended up on this wonderful Acer Windows uh, yeah. Windows Windows Vista. Is it still Windows Vista? Just yeah. That? Oh wow. Well, we'll see. I mean, touch touch wood, it normally works. Yeah, I'm sure it's going to work. Yeah, we'll see how it goes. Okay. <laughs> this is a definite trial and error show today. So, if it works, then then well, I have like, found a format. Like 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 most of it. Yeah. Okay. Well, you you so that so the good, the bad, and the ugly is going to start. In, in 12 o'clock yeah so 15 minutes 15 minutes and time you'll see if my idea works yeah I'm sure it's going to work <laughs> <laughs> that's going to be fine this is probably I, the first time anyone's ever explains the, the format of, of how they play their music on the radio I, I don't know well I think we should do more of it because um, the listeners I, well, I, don't, I mean, it's, it's, maybe it's not it's unusual to, to say well we've got this technical issue we've got that technical issue and but I mean, I think phonic listeners are a long-suffering lot, and they do know there is the odd. Yeah. Occasionally, there is a technical issue, but um, I think it's also just worth go going into how how the studio develops, how what's going to happen with FM, how we move into social media, what the um, what the audience are going to do by mixing what they get from from phonic and what they get from anywhere else, and also what the um, what the business model is that the jolly old music industry is is following and therefore what guidance we can have on on whether we mention that you can copy a file from one format to another and well, so yes. forth which i think you've got to because <laughs> otherwise the audience will think we're just in cloud cuckoo land well they? yeah i mean one day you could probably record everything at home including your commentary and everything onto your you know computer yeah. and then email that to the studio and that will just play it right so no yeah. one ever have to come in anymore so then it'd be a completely online process well that's you see that assumes that that's that's the what's future, available so so d microphones do you find the yeah. microphone on your phone is is as good as these wonderful well, microphones we have technology is improving isn't it so i guess it will be at some point you think it'll be good enough it'll be a sad day i think because because the whole point of djing is is to kind of uh, clumsily you know go through stacks of cds and vinyl and cassette tape even and, and whatever you can find and just piece it together you know it's the whole kind of do it yourself, you know, live broadcasting idea that's kind of dying out. I mean, it'd be a shame if it did all kind of go digital, really. 
I mean, I like a certain well, amount of analog. It keeps it keeps you kind of somewhere in between the past and the present, right? <laughs> well, we're certainly that. <laughs> we're certainly that. Yeah. But what you what you're envisaging is that what people do. Well, when we say social media, what what they basically mean is that anybody can do it with access to the internet. With the, yeah. with the consumer electronics sort of level of equipment. If there was a box somewhere of a transmitter and you paid a certain amount of money into that, like you paid your licensing fee into that, yeah, every you know every year or every half a year, then you just submit your show to that and that played it out. Right. You could do all that without even having to have a uh, a whole room to you know. Yeah. People to meet and broadcast from. You know, that's that's the, I guess that's the kind of idea of digital radio really. If it yeah. moves in that direction. Right? Yeah. Well, it can go. It can yeah. go in that. Can all end go in that direction? You probably Can't, will one day, but you know, hopefully we're still a little bit away from there. Yeah. Well, it's good. I mean, it's good <laughs> to meet out every so often as well. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah however, right. however yeah. briefly. Yeah. Anyway, John, <laughs> have you got have you got any more tracks to play? Because we've got to we've got to um. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, so, hang on. Sorry. I I I I was um. Your your microphone should be working now. <laughs> okay. Because we've got to wrap up our Bluetooth device, we've got to put that away sh shortly. Is so we'll play behind the uh, laptop. Yeah. Now, what does that do then? Exactly? Okay. Yeah. So, what we found is that the the cable which you're going to plug into your computer. Um, yeah. We find that if we if we plug it into a phone and John keeps moving around with his phone, which is his habit, then the phone the cable begins to crackle over yeah. time. Okay. Because it's yeah. a it's a sort of domestic quality cable in a in a industrial sort of setup, so what we do is to plug the Bluetooth device into the sub mixer, and then the phone comes in at full volume, and we use the sub mixer to control the volume. So that's that's basically what we're doing. But from John's point of view, he can just move around with his phone, and it, it, he regards it as a normal normal right, situation. So it's basically a, a wireless. Yeah, it's wireless. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which we we quite like. We know there are studio people who like cables and who find wireless unreliable or they don't like the idea. But then there are other people who find cables unreliable. unusual. Unreliable, <laughs> yes, um, it's just what fits with you, really. Uh, now, Sweet Home Alabama is what's coming up now. That sounds good. So, so. Uh, that's us not, not almost gone. This is um, this is the Wild Show, Phonic FM 106.8, and Chris will be back next week. We're pretty sure about that. And uh, John and I will be back on Tuesday, the We Not Know Show, which is 12 o'clock, isn't it? 12 o'clock on a on a Tuesday. And uh, JD has disappeared. He's he he does do various technical things which we still don't fully understand, but it means he has to wander off, off now and again. And um, the uh, any Morricone music will be coming very shortly. We're pretty sure that's going to work. So we've got one, one, one more track, which is the selector, and uh, I think this is because the night is uh, is the, is is the last track. So uh, see you next week. <laughs>